Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for taking time during your planning period to meet with me today. I enjoyed sitting in your classroom with you yesterday and watching you teach a lesson on the Odyssey. You did a great job. Thanks for coming by. You're welcome. I love coming and watching other teachers teach. It reminds me of how different students have different learning styles and teachers teach differently too. Speaking of different learning styles, I wanted to talk with you today specifically about classroom management. First, I wanted to let you know how great of a job you're doing with managing behavior and creating a positive environment with your kids. Um, I have two resources that I gave you that I use myself to critique my own classroom management and they have been a really big help for me. The first one is a checklist from Louisiana Tech, which I used to observe your classroom management um, yesterday. If you look on it, there's five domains on there with a few subcategories in each one. Um, I made notes next to each one that I checked off while I was watching you teach, as well as notes next to ones that I didn't check. Um, there's just a few things that I wanted to talk with you about that I noticed. Can you tell me, um, what the procedure is in your classroom whenever students don't have their materials like a Chromebook or a writing utensil? Well, my students know that we use Chromebooks every day in class and they're supposed to have them along with the charger. And if they don't have a pen or a pencil, I usually recommend them and have them to ask a classmate to borrow one. Okay. I noticed uh, yesterday when Davion didn't have a pen, you told him to ask BJ to borrow one. Um, one thing I use in my classroom is a trade-off system. I have a box of pens and pencils that I keep behind my desk and if a student wants to borrow one, they trade me something of theirs like their phone or a shoe and at the end of class they get their item back when I get mine back. Um, it teaches them to be responsible about their belongings. I also use Chromebooks every day and if a student doesn't have theirs, they're expected to write their answers on paper that day. That's a good idea. How can I start implementing those in my classroom after the school year has already started though? It's best to teach, to teach procedures on the first day of school, but it's never too late to implement new procedures when you identify a need for your classroom. You can start a procedure anytime, but it takes practice and routine with your students until they learn the procedure and know how the process works. Okay, well I'll try to do that with them tomorrow. Awesome. Please let me know how it works out for you. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was addressing this behavior. I noticed a scenario where the student in the back of the room would not wake up and engage in the lesson. This is a difficult misbehavior for many teachers to tackle. Tell me how you usually deal with habitual sleepers in your class. Well, I have some students that fall asleep and sometimes it's honestly a relief. I feel like I can engage my other students and make more progress with them if some of my bad kids go to sleep. I know that sounds bad, but it's hard not to choose the lesser of two evils in the situation. If it's a talkative kid who is sleeping, I sometimes just let them sleep and have them catch up on work later. If the problem continues, I will call home to parents. I think many teachers feel that way, that more progress is made whenever certain students are absent or asleep, that sometimes it is challenging to wake them up if you know they are going to cause a disruption. That's why it's so, so important to have specific expectations in place for students so there is no question of what to expect in class every day. I usually cut some slack in the beginning to a student who is sleeping before calling home. I would first try nudging them away, then take them outside and have a conversation with them away from their peers. A lot of times there might be a problem going on outside of school that's causing them to sleep every day. Sometimes it's medicine they're taking, sometimes it's not getting enough sleep at home, but it's important to get to the root of the issue before issuing consequences. If neither of those things work, call home and talk to the parents about things that might be going on at home. Okay, I'll try doing that, and I'll do better with making sure all of my students are awake from now on. Awesome. The other resource that I printed out for you is a worksheet from the LVOE, which looks similar to the checklist, but it offers specific questions to ask yourself while you create new procedures. You should be able to answer each one of those questions, and if you can't, it would probably be a good idea to address them because that means that there probably isn't a procedure in place. Would you mind filling this out uh, for me over the next few days? It's a great self-evaluation tool that I use every year. Sure, I don't mind at all. 
Thank you. I want you to know that I'm always here for guidance and questions, and it will never be my goal to talk down to you in any way or make you feel inferior. My only job as your coach is to help you be great. Is there anything else that I can help you with? Anything you want to talk about? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, I'm here if you need anything. Let's make a plan to meet back in two weeks and we can talk about that worksheet and see how it's going. Sounds good. Thank you.